So you've just purchased Addictive Drums 2 from Excellent Audio. Now what? Where do you go from here? How do you get started? Well, that is what I'm going to help you with today. I'm just going to walk you through step by step and tell you all the things you need to know about getting started with Addictive Drums 2. So let's go dive right in. Here is, I'm in Studio One, by the way, you can do this in any DAW, it does not matter. So I'm going to drag in an instance of Addictive Drums 2 and let's get right into it. So here's the main window right here. Let's start up on the top left. So this is the preset browser and then any packs that you have will be listed here. So if I click on Fairfax volume one, you know, these are all the presets from that drum kit and then Fairfax volume two, United Pop, et cetera, et cetera. So you might have more or less packs just depending on what you have uh, as of now and you can always buy more as well from excellent audio. So the preset library is a fantastic place to start. Um, right, so you can just go through these and just listen to what all these presets sound like. So that's the preset browser. And then right here, if you click here, this is where you can save any presets that you make. You can always save your own and then um, that will be added to the library here inside of your Addictive Drums software. Now over here, so we're in gallery mode right now. So let's hop over to explore. So this is where you can explore the different packs that you have, or you can explore ones that you don't have yet, that you haven't purchased yet. Uh, let's start here. So I do have this pack, Studio Pop. And what's really cool about this is even if you're not a drummer and you're not good yet at maybe creating your own patterns and your own drum rhythms, this will give you a beautiful uh, starting point because you have all of these. So let's say I'm like, okay, let's say I like that. If I like that, look what I can do. I can literally come here, I can drag it into my session and it automatically has that MIDI for me. So let's bring this over here. Now, when I was going through these, it automatically switched the preset to the preset that was listed here. So now what I can do is I can adjust the tempo because this is MIDI as well, right? I can adjust the tempo. Whoops. And it'll automatically adjust the MIDI as well. So you can do that. So let's say we want a super fast around 135 beat. Let's say that's kind of what you're feeling. I just drag that in just from exploring in this explore window right here. That is how I discovered that sound and that beat. And I literally dragged that into my DAW and boom, there it is. And then I can obviously duplicate it. I can come in here and edit anything that I want to. Uh, it's just, it works fantastic. It's great. And then you can start to build the rest of your song. So that's the explore window. This is where you can just browse through any of the packs that you have or any packs that you might potentially want to buy from Addictive Drums. All of that will be in this explore window. So now let's hop over to the kit window. So this is where you can customize uh, what you're doing. Okay, so let's come over here. Okay, so we're back to Fairfax Volume 1. This is a pack that I own, so we can, we have full control over this. So here, under the kit window, we can customize this. So let's say, here, let me move this here so I can actually play this. So let's say I like this kit but I wanna switch out the kick drum. Well, what's really cool is you can come over here to the kick drum and here you have a list of all the other kick drums that you have inside of this software. So I can just browse until I find one I like. So let's say, okay, that's the one I want. Now you can run with that kick drum. Same thing for anything else, cymbals, rides, you can add some extra sounds, uh, some extra like claps, 
bongos, you name it. You can play with that under this kit window right here. And then obviously as you select a different preset from any of the packs that you might have, let's go for the like 80s Lindrum preset, then it automatically changes this to that preset and then you can adjust it from there. Now let's hop over to the edit window. So the edit window, this is where you will do just some fine tuning and you'll start to uh, really customize the sound with things like EQ, compression, tape saturation, all those types of things. So I'm gonna hop back to the uh, Fairfax volume one. Um, let's see what this one sounds like. Yeah, that one's not bad. We'll give that one a shot. So under the edit window here, as you can see, you can also switch out the kick or the sounds here. So if, if you click on these tabs right here, or these buttons, then you have the snare, you got the hi-hat, the toms, and then, and then you have all these faders here as well. Um, and you can customize now. So what I like to do and what I suggest you do is start with the preset, browse through a preset until you find a sound that is close to what you want. Because then you can just fine tune it and make some adjustments maybe on the periphery of the preset without having to completely build your own from scratch. And I think that's just a faster workflow. And most of the time you'll probably get a more interesting sound because people, there have been really good drummers and musicians who've spent hours and hours developing this software, coming up with these presets. So there's no shame in utilizing that and making the most of the presets. But let's say you have a preset and you like it, but you're like, I think I wanna maybe adjust the kick drum a little bit. You can come in here, adjust the EQ, make it boxier, uh, less high end, make it just more like that. Um, you can adjust the beater, like where the mic or how much, because you have the beater mic and the front mic here. So if you want this sound versus that sound, and or you can go right in the middle. And then you can even add some noise here in Addictive Drums. So it's like a tube noise, DC, muff, vinyl. And then you can adjust the level of that. So that's cool. And then here we just have compression. You can add some compression if you like. Now again, we're still on the kick drum here because if we move to snare, then it's a whole different set of settings. So I don't recommend doing a ton of adjusting on the individual tracks and the individual faders here because you can get the biggest bang for your buck or the most bang for your buck by just putting these effects and adjusting things on the master fader right here because that'll affect the entire drum track. And usually it'll sound better if you get a cohesive sound on your, from like if you take a step back and you process the entire drum bus, all the drum tracks together because it gives your overall drum sound a very glued sound that really works well uh, together. So we've got compression, distortion, EQ. You, the tape and shape is one of my favorite features inside of Addictive Drums. So you can add some tape to it. Right, you got some bottom end to really beef up the bottom end if you like. You can add saturation, right? Um, and then here we've got the cut as well so you can filter it out. And you can automate that in if you'd want if you want to inside of your DAW. Uh, and yeah, and then we've obviously got the overheads that we can turn on. Let's switch to a different preset that actually uses overheads more. See what LA Rock sounds like. Yeah, so here we've got some more overheads going on. See this without the overheads? See, and here is the overhead settings. And then we've got the room as well. Got the bus, which the bus I believe is, I don't really pay attention to the bus to be honest with you, so I'm not even gonna talk about it. It's probably just a parallel processing thing, but I wouldn't really be too concerned about this bus button right here. And then we've got the send effects, which we'll get into the, the effects here in a second. Um, and then again, you have the master where you can make any adjustments to that. And then you've got the panning here. So as you can see, you can pan things. If you want the hi-hat pan to the left, 
doesn't seem to be panning it because most of the hi hats coming through the overheads, right? So if you wanted to pan the overheads to the left, I like the room to the right, which gives it an interesting stereo sound, right? So you can mess around with panning there, and and then obviously you can adjust the faders up and down when it comes to the volume of the individual sounds. Now, let's get into the effects. So let's say that you want to send, let's say you want to add a little bit of reverb to your snare drum. You don't even necessarily have to do that, you know, in your DAW. I mean, you could just add, you know, a reverb inside of your DAW in your mix window. However, it can be a very efficient move to just keep everything inside of addictive drums and to add a reverb or a delay that way. So in this preset here, this LA Rock preset, they already have an ambience and a hall reverb on these two effects blocks right here. So what we can do now is we, if we come over here to this snare and we turn the sends on, this is send one, which is this ambience, and then send two is the hall. So let's send it to the hall and see what that sounds like. So there, so there you get that big hall sound, right? Now, you're also hearing this hall because, as you can see here, the overheads and the room inside of this preset, they're sending the overheads and the room to both of these sends as well, to both of these effects. So yeah, under effects here, this is where you can add any of these types of reverbs, ambience, like you can switch this from ambience to room to hall to plate, uh, and you can just play around with it until you find something that you like. You can, just, you can adjust the EQ of just that reverb signal as well, which is very useful. If you want a warmer reverb sound, um, that is what you can do there. And then you can adjust the overall level of those effects here, which you can do that here as well. And then once again, on the master channel, you can make adjustments here that will affect the entirety of the drum bus. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the, the editing and the effects. Now, just a couple more things I want to show you here that will be extremely helpful if you're just starting out especially, and that is the beats section here. If you just want some inspiration and you want to start to actually have some good sounding drum grooves in your productions, then you can get there. There is this is an incredible library. So if you're not confident yet in your ability to produce your own drums from addictive drums, then try this. Just go to the beats section and browse through these beats. We've got this. Say we wanted let's say we want that one right super fast again remember what we did earlier if we just click on this and we drag this in look what happens it drags that MIDI so now we have this long drum performance that we can use to start building our song And then you can, you know, chop this up. You can move this to a different section of the song. You can just cut all of it out and just focus in on one particular section, right? But this helps give you a starting point by dragging these MIDI beats, these MIDI grooves into your session, into your DAW. And it can really help speed up the workflow, especially if you don't have the skill or the confidence to record these in yourself. Now, speaking of recording these things in yourself or recording your drum beats in yourself inside of addictive drums, I want to show you the map window. And that is, if you hit this question mark right here, map window, this is where you can assign the sounds that you want for, say, this pad, right? Because this is what I had to do when I got this pad. This is an Adam pad from Studio One. So now if you have a popular sequencer or a popular pad, they have some listed here and that will automatically give you the default for those uh, machines like Roland, Yamaha, whatever pad that you might be using. But I had to do mine manually and then, so because this is a certain note on this pad, 
So then I was like, okay, that's that note. I want this to be the kick. So then I went over here. Let's see where are we at? We're over here. So this is the kick. So I had to find my kick and I had to drag this kick there. And then that was now assigned to this note. And then this, I wanted to be the snare. As you can see, the snare open hit. I don't think it was there originally. So then I had to go to my snares here and drag in the snare open hit like that. And then I did that for the rest of the pad. So, so I have kick snare, got my hi-hats here, got you know some extra stuff here. I got my toms right here and then my cymbals up here. And then once I had that, I went ahead and just saved this preset by just hitting save. And then I made this Marcus Adam since this is an Adam pad from Studio One. Now, if you're using a larger keyboard, it's you're probably good to go the way it is, right? And you can just use your keyboard to record those things in. Um, you can 100% do that as well. And then one more thing when it comes to the beats here is every pack that you buy from Addictive Drums comes with their own set of preset beats that work specifically well for that pack. So let's say I'm doing, um, let's switch over to the real machines. Let's say we want a 80s real machine Lindrum sound. If I hit play here. Okay, and then if I come over here and I hit the real machines pack under beats, now these are specifically made to be used with the real machines drum pack. So, right? Whoops. And, and then what's really cool too is within each of these drum beats, there's a variant, right? So you can drag these variants. So let's say that you wanted to let me get rid of these. And let's say I wanted to drag in, this is my main one. Eh. Right, so let's see, I wanted to do that. This, this is the main variation. So let's drag that in. So if we come over here, let's come back and adjust this tempo to about maybe around 100. Right? So we have our pattern there. And then you can even pull in like an alternative or a clap. What happens if we pull in the clap? This is just another version of it. I'm not hearing the clap though. Hmm. It's supposed to be a clap, but I'm not hearing it. In any case, like as you can see here, you can play around with these beats um, and just you've got a lot of variations here as well. So my friend, that is an overview. That is how you can get started maximizing and making the most of addictive drums. So I really hope you found this helpful. Now, if you're into indie music, that's what I teach is like indie rock, indie pop, alternative, and those types of genres. If that's what you're into, then I've got the perfect gift for you. It's my seven steps to a killer indie song. This will give you a roadmap a step-by-step -step system to just pump out incredible songs. And it walks you through the entire process and gives you that Bible, if you will, it gives you the roadmap and a plan to make it happen. So it's 100% free. I'll leave a link in the description below. So be sure to grab yourself a copy of that. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial, my friend. I will see you next time.